Hello everyone. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to connect a Modbus RTU device to a Modbus TCP network by adding a Modbus gateway within your Easy Builder Pro project. To begin, let's open an instance of Easy Builder Pro. And in order for our device to function as a Modbus gateway, we'll need to add a Modbus server driver within the device tab of our system parameters. However, because I'm starting a new project, I will also need to add our Modbus RTU, RTU over TCP driver. For those of you who are also creating a new project, you will find that the system parameters will be open by default. Whereas if you're adding this feature to an existing project, you will need to open the system parameters, which can be found within the top left corner of the Home tab. Within the Device tab of our system parameters, we'll select the New Device slash Server button near the center. Within the following menu, in front of Device Type, we'll select the drop-down list and then search for and select our Modbus RTU, RTU over TCP driver. And within the previous settings menu, you may configure the COM settings for this driver by selecting the Settings button. Although for this demonstration, I'll leave the default configuration, click OK, and then add our Modbus server driver. To add our Modbus server driver, we will once again select the New Device slash Server button. Then, using the Device Type drop-down list, we'll search for and select our Modbus server driver. Near the center of our Device Settings menu, you'll notice that the port number that our HMI or Gateway device will use as our Modbus server's port number is 502. However, you may change the port number by selecting the Settings button when working with a CMT, CMTX, or Gateway device, or by changing the HMI's port number within the Model tab when working with a non-CMT HMI. At the bottom of our Device Settings menu, let's enable our Modbus TCP IP Gateway, and within the drop-down list, we'll select Use Station Number Given by Client Request. With this selected, the gateway device will only map data from the RTU device that has the same station number specified within the Modbus TCP IP client's request. Next, we'll select the Address Mapping Tables button, and within this menu we'll define how the memory allocation of our Modbus RTU device will map to our Modbus TCP IP server. By default, some registers within the HMI's internal memory will be mapped to our Modbus server. But by selecting a table within this list and clicking the Settings button below, we can remap this table to target our Modbus RTU device. To do this, I'll select the first table within this list and click the Settings button. Within the Comment Entry box, I'll rename this table to 0x. I'll leave the address mode set to Bit and our type configured to Read slash Write and then I'll change the mapped device address such that it targets the 0x register of our Modbus RTU device. The option called Use Execution Function will allow you to determine if a Modbus TCP IP client can write to the mapped device address depending on the state of a user-defined bit address. Below this, we can define the table size, which I'll set to 100 bits, and with that finished, let's click OK to save our table. Before I continue, I'm going to delete the five additional tables, and this time we'll create a new table from scratch. To do this, I'll select the Add button, and within our Settings menu, I'll type 4x within the comment box. I'll set the address mode to Word, and the type will be Read slash Write. Within the Modbus and Map Device Address Entry field, I'll configure both to the 4x register with an offset of 1. I'll define the table size as 100 words, and at the bottom you'll notice a new field, with which we can specify a method of conversion that will allow us to swap the high and low byte, or high and low word data, associated with our Modbus registers. Although for most applications, specifying a method of data conversion will not be necessary. 
With that, I'll click OK, and before I close my system parameters, I'd like to mention that just below our list of tables are two properties that we can use to determine how the HMI will handle read and write requests to Modbus addresses that are not defined within the table. The first option, when enabled, will allow the HMI to send a value of zero as a read response for undefined registers. While the second option will determine if the HMI will accept a write multiple registers command to addresses that are undefined. Now, I'll close my system parameters, place some objects, and then download this to my device for testing. Using CMT Viewer, I am able to monitor my HMI, and the HMI is currently reading data from our Modbus RTU device. On my PC, I'll use a Modbus scanner to view the contents of each register defined within our address mapping table. And you can see that this data is both current and accurate. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.